Hey guys, welcome back to the AR tutorial. In this one, we actually start tackling the gameplay mechanic and it's quite fun to be honest. Let's actually have a look at what you're going to be having at the end of this episode. So over here is just a uh, really normal, just a rigid body structure, I guess. And if you just move it up, as you can tell, it has gravity on it. And um, we're going to be taking this down using our gun. And that's our gun. It's really like the best shape you could have think of. But here it is. And having this gun, I will now click and it's going to send a bullet towards here. So let's just actually try to do something that makes sense here. And I missed it because I suck. Let me just fire a lot of bullets. Probably going to land one eventually. And as you can tell, this would now be level complete. And guys, that is what we're going to be doing in this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so guys, in this episode, things are going to be a little bit faster and we're going to start implementing some fun element to the game, such as the uh, AR tracking. Um, over here is my camera, as you can tell, it's working on the left side of my... Um, actually, this is my game, actually, and my webcam is just plugged in on my uh, actual computer. So, we're going to be using the phone as well, but we're going to be doing all our testing using a webcam. Um, this is what I'm going to be using as a tracking, so if you can tell in the preview, we had some kind of way to direct the bullets and that is what I'm going to be using to direct the, bu the bullets. Now um, something I'd like to mention beforehand is uh, this is not the optimal thing that I could be using for this. The reason I'm saying this is because this is actually the same thing if we just flip it upside down like that. So your playing card might be cool if you're using this side but for some reason this side the, tra the tracking wasn't really good. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be using the back side however Sometime it might detect that this actual thing is pointing towards me, so this way, instead of pointing it upward like that. And it's just uh, just something to know, and um, I guess the best thing you could have as a tracking is some really complex shape that does not have like a symmetry in it. And uh, yeah, so really something complex. At first I thought that like the best tracking would be something really simple, like white background, but it's not really not the case, it's actually using something really complex. So this is going to work fine, and um, the only problem I said is the symmetry. Now let's go ahead and just go inside of, not our game, we're going to go inside of the uh, website over here on the Vephoria. And we're going to go under Target Manager now, we're going to start adding those targets. And what we're going to be doing is actually adding them on the cloud and we might be able to use them back. Well, we're going to be adding them, not really on the cloud, but on their website at least, and then we're going to be downloading a package they give us. So we're going to go under Add Database again, and um, this one is going to be for the name, for the game, AR Shooter. We're going to create a new database, and here it is, and then we're going to put some targets in it. For this game, I think the only target we're going to need, like the only one, is just going to be like the gun. Um, I guess you call it a gun, you could call it a crossbow, you could call it just, you know, the thing that is going to direct the bullet, that is going to put them, um, that is going to give them a direction. So in this case, I'll do add target, I will find an image, like the best image you can find of your tracking object. In my case, I have this image up here that I've got from the web. Um, this is actually cards I've brought off a website and they do have all the PNG somewhere on their um, website. So I just basically just grabbed it and the width is going to be something like um, this is going to be if we put 1 this is going to be acting as 0 0.1 meter in the game so if we put 10 this is actually a meter which I guess I'll keep here and the name of that is going to be gun. I'll just call it gun. Make things simple a little bit. We're going to be adding a target. Make sure this is a JPEG image. I think PNG works too but every time I try to import one, it says that it works, but every time that I do try to import one, it just denies it. So um, I got bored and I actually did it with a JPEG image. Once you've got your image right here, your gun, you're going to be downloading your database. And the platform is, of course, going to be the Unity editor. Click on download, and you should now have this thing down there, a new package, which you can then import. And um, I failed importing my package because I was in play mode, but let me go back here. Oh, it's actually, I right, let me go find it in my download folder. This would be the AR Shooter. 
Right, so it's going to import the image of your gun and also some more data that it's going to use to actually track it. Alright, so once this is completed, you should now be able to go inside of your game and I think it should be detecting it. Um, okay, never mind, it's not detecting it just yet. To have it detected, you gotta go on, under the uh, database load behavior, load your database and then active it. By doing this, it should now actually create an object, the new game object, which is going to act as your card. So as you can tell, this is my card. And uh, here it is. So I just move a little bit. My card's also going to move in the game. So here we go. However, we're going to be using another one on top of that. And um, I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. We are going to go under Vephoria, Prefabs, and we're going to be using an image target. Now this image target, you got to be defining what it is. I'm going to go over here. So it is from the AR shooter database, and then it is a gun. And here we got it. It is quite big indeed, but that's what we're going to be using. Now this object, let's call it gun. And we can go ahead and just start creating a script out of that. So I will create a new script called gun and it's going to be something really, really simple. We are going to double click on that script, open it up in your favorite script editor and just quickly start just coding a little bit of mechanic in there. Um, if my model level up would open, it's, I think it's crashed right now. Yep, it's pretty much just crashed. So I'm just going to end the task really quickly. Um, but here it is basically, that's our gun class. Now in our gun class, we're going to do something fairly simple. Like I've said, we're not going to be complicating things too much. Let's go ahead and just declare an update. And inside of our update, we'll do a if input.getMouseButton. If we're clicking somewhere, um, let's just put the zero in there, which means the left click. If we're clicking on left click and on the phone that just um, get mouse button down, sorry about that, get mouse button down, zero on the phone is a simple tap. And on, on the PC it's actually just a left click. So if we're doing that, let's actually create an object and just give it a force depending on the image tracker on the gun position, rotation, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go up here, just declare a public game object that I call bullet or bullet prefab. And then here we're going to declare a game object geo is equal to bullet prefab, actually is equal to instantiate. We're going to instantiate a bullet prefab at the position transform dot position and the rotation transform dot rotation. So, oh, by the way, as a game object. So it's simply going to create an object and that object is going to assume the position and the, the rotation of our gun. All right. Then after that, let's go ahead and just fetch the rigid body. So go dot get component rigid body, assuming we're going to have a rigid body on that. And we're going to be doing a add force. And the add force is going to be transform dot forward times. Um, let's just go ahead and just type in something really quickly, say times 15 for now. We can modify that later. I'll be using a force mode impulse as I guess it's kind of an impulse when you fire a gun. It's not, oh, it could be an impulse or a velocity change. I'm going to be using impulse. And I think that's pretty much all we need in here. Now we're going to be creating a uh, bullet prefab. So I will quickly do that. Maybe do a, we're going to be adding a new cylinder. And that cylinder is going to be acting as a bullet. So let's just quickly give it a scale that we want maybe rotate it this way. Well, the rotation doesn't really matter as it is going to be assuming the rotation of our other object. Now, the only problem I have with this is the forward of that object is actually this way. So it's going to be fired like that, which is kind of weird. Let me just use an actual 3D sphere. That's going to be better. All right, so we've got our 3D sphere now. This is going to be called bullet. And on top of that, there is going to be a rigid body. Now this rigid body could have a higher mass if you wish. Uh, I'll just leave it on one. I'll just leave everything on default right now because I don't really want to balance that out just yet. I just want to have some simple prototype going. And maybe you want to like increment the size of that by twice the amount. 
that could be cool. Now uh, the next thing we need to do is actually just save this as a prefab. So we do have our prefab folder over here. I'm simply going to drag and drop it in there. And I think that's all we're going to be needing. We could be adding a script a little bit later on to remove that bullet from the scene. That's can, you know, that, that is always useful, especially when it has a rigid body and it falls down infinitely. Um, and let's just put let's just clean up this part as well. So put the game inside of the scene, put the gun inside of the script, and we should now be good to go. Now, if you click on your gun, you can go ahead and just assign the bullet prefab you just made. And we're going to be taking a look at this in the game. I'll be removing my my bullet and then press on play. And let's have a look at this. So my gun is over here right now. It's kind of hidden. Uh, we can't really see it because the tracking hat the, it doesn't see it yet. And even if it does, the tracking is not going to show it, as you can tell right here. It's actually, it found the gun, but it's not actually just moving it yet. Because we're well, first, we're on the wrong mode, and a second, because it's it's not actually displaying the tracking object. It's just showing this. As you can tell, nothing. Now, if I press here, as you can tell, we do have some weird balls going left and right. And it's just almost working. <laughs> Every time I click I spawn balls and they just follow this path. However, my only problem with this is I don't really want them to keep following after I launch. So we gotta be changing the center of the world. And this is done using the AR camera component, I believe, in the uh, Vephoria behavior. And now the world center mode is actually going to be the camera, I believe. Let's try this out. So now we're launching the game, as you can tell, this is now detected, and if I press on it, this is almost working. However, like I told you before, uh, it used the wrong direction, but if I just go like this, as you can tell, it is spawning the right direction, and it could be even spawning if we just look at the other scene like that. The more I put it vertically, I can almost shoot myself. As you can tell, okay, so this is going to work. Now, obviously, we have a little bit too many balls on the screen, so we're going to have to create that script uh, I was talking about where we just remove the object afterward. What we could also do is give um, this an actual 3D object. So if we go over the gun, we can be actually just um, creating, say, a 3D cube. And I'll just scale it up properly. Something like that scale it like this and then put the gun on that instead so I'll just be moving it here. Now the gun is no longer on this object but it is on this one which in return is going to give us a slightly different result and also because this one has a collider so I'm probably like I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna mess up things a little bit as you can tell. Uh, and right now it's not shooting towards the right direction it should be good now. And also something that would be nice to do is actually spawn these um, Spawn these at the very end of the gun. Right now they're spawning in the middle, which is kind of not cool. So we're going to be making sure to fix that. And this is this could actually be quite a cool game. Let me just quickly look at that. This might give you ideas for the future. So you just go here and you try to balance this out. That is really hard. Anyway, let's go back to our sheeps. So we're going to be spawning the bullets, but just a little bit further than we should. Let me quickly go back in Moldova because it keeps crashing. And we're going to be adding a point, a vector 3 point where we actually spawn this. So let's do public vector 3 or actually public transform spawn position. And we're going to be not really spawn position but spawn object. Now spawn object is going to be an object we put on our gun and it's just simply going to be the really tip of it. And whenever we do spawn our bullets, we're going to be using the spawn object dot transform, actually dot position, and that's going to work. We can also be using the uh, spawn object dot rotation. It's going to be um, as a children of that object, so basically it's going to work in, um, <laughs> in that way as well. So let's go ahead and just create a empty game object as the children of the cube 
you can be putting a tag on it so you can see the tags are the thing a little bit up here not sorry not a tag but um, the icon and here it is this is called the uh, bullet spam or something of the sort you just move it over here at the very tip you make sure that uh, the cube which is the gun now has this in its field and we can then just give it a small try again hopefully everything works and it's gonna be working it always does and as you can tell it's a little bit better now of course I think the force is not good enough but uh, we're really gonna be able to tell if the force is good enough only once we actually uh, play the game with some you no know, um, obstacle in the back now transform four times 15 I don't know if that's enough I feel like it's really really slow but at the same time it's because the physics are not are a little bit different than I expected them to be but if we go on say a bullet and we just put the mass to say 10 and I've also increased the speed of my shooting let's give this a try I feel like it's a little bit better but then we get a bug where uh, it's pretty much just stuck in the firing chamber so we're just slight, slightly going to move the bullets down over here then give this another try quickly and it has not been <laughs> tracked the thing yet and uh, it feels like it is almost working but the mass is too big I right, may go back to an actual mass so say 3 and then this impulse I'll be changing impulse to velocity change instead just trying stuff out of course uh, pick the one that you like the most I'm not really good with physics in UD because I'd rather not use it most of the time. I'd rather just use a character controller, uh, character controller, and just do my own physics. But you know, this one works quite fine. All right, so let's start working on an actual target in the background. And <laughs> this is, this could actually be fun for some reason. I don't know why. All right, <laughs> let's go back to our things now. We're gonna be creating a new 3D plane that I'll just call, I'll just call floor for now. And maybe give it a scale of 333. Three. Move it here. Have a look at the camera while we're moving that. So let's just put that down a little bit. Oh, that's the gun. My bad. And you know, something of the sort in the back here. We could say minus 10 meters. That would sound good. Actually, you know what? <laughs> 100 meters. And maybe reduce the Z shape a little bit so it's more slim. And then beneath that floor, I will create cubes. First cube is right here. Now it's assuming a weird um, transform scale, and that's totally normal. And I'll actually keep that. So just be putting that up here. Make it taller. And you know, that could be our first level right there. So move it this way. Rotate it. Oops. And just put it at the very top here. And I'll just be making the size a little bit bigger. Something like that. Now, um, the tricky part is actually adding a rigid body to it and making sure it doesn't break up. So I'm going to be adding a rigid body to every single one of those objects we just created, every single one of those cubes. And then let's just hit play, see how it works. And as you can tell, uh, this first object is a little bit intertwined in that because when we hit play, it just moves a little bit and it's like a little bit dangerous so what I'll do is just crank it up a little bit it's better to have a small gap like this because you know it's gonna land like kind of safely um, versus the two objects being stuck together because that might give you some really weird behavior depending on the GPU you have so I just leave it like that and as you can tell it's gonna be like falling really smoothly and now here's my card my gun and let's actually just make sure we take this down by shooting on it success so that would be a level complete right there guys and um, this is where I'm going to end today's episode I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed this episode I'm having quite a lot of fun actually making these they're quite fun to be honest and um, if you did learn something please leave me a like really appreciate it if you have any comment or question please leave them in the comment section below and also make sure you subscribe to the channel that would help out a lot as well and if you want to check out the patreon page you can also have some reward there and also pledge to help me out in what I'm trying to do here and uh, other than that, guys, I will see you in the next episode.